experience. Did you think this is it? Um, many thoughts went through my mind, the first of which was um, hoping we could get down, but then when we got down was wondering what was ahead of us, and uh, clearly the thoughts that go through your mind at times like that uh, go through a whole tumult of experiences, but uh, it was very scary and I don't want to have to repeat it. And of course you had your 13-year-old son Matthew with you. Yes, I did, and uh, he was sitting a few rows behind me, so the first thing when we did land was uh, I was worried about where he was, but uh, somebody shouted to me that he'd got out at the back, and I should get out as soon as possible, which I did. Now, people react to, uh, in different ways, don't they, to that sort of thing. Was there a general chaos, or was, were, were people very calm? Um, it was relatively calm. I mean, uh, a number of people were shouting, there's a fire, there's a fire, to call the crew's attention. But to be honest, the minute that the, uh, the engine blew up, um, there was a warning sign that we could hear a buzzer um, within the uh, cockpit in the plane. And very quickly, the uh, air crew said to us, we were, going to, uh, we we're in an emergency position and that they were going to have to ditch the plane. And would we brace ourselves for um, an emergency landing? A lot depends, doesn't it, on the air crew. H how did they react? Were they calm in their instructions? They're outstanding, and um, I've got nothing but praise for, obviously, the pilot for his skill, but also the two stewardesses who gave very clear instructions and seemed very calm. Uh, and how did the players deal with it generally? Um, I think they were very calm at the time. As I say, a few people shouted out about the fire, but the minute the plane was down, um, everybody seemed to uh, file out of the plane in a very orderly fashion. They were in single file. Nobody was trying to push ahead. Uh, clearly, they're a fairly fit bunch, certainly fitter than I am and uh, they managed to jump out. I think I had a helping hand from Nigel Martin behind me, and uh, we landed on the uh, turf and then uh, ran away from the plane. And then we did a very quick head count, and I think the players were outstanding in the sense that they were very dignified. Uh, we were then uh, in the uh, airport terminal for three odd hours afterwards, and nobody complained. The, we were just lucky to be there, and there was a sort of strange camaraderie between us all. The worst thing, of course, often is um, uh, the aftermath, isn't it? You start thinking about what might have been. Yes, I mean, I've um, come straight into the office today, and um, I'm probably glad I have, because I don't want too much time in the short term to think about it. Uh, when one does, and uh, without the adrenaline of the panic at the time, but in the cool light of day, uh, I think when you think that, uh, in the pilot's words, we were probably 30 seconds away from the plane blowing up, uh, it's very scary, and I think it will hit home to a few of us probably tomorrow. Well, the experts say, don't they, that sometimes there can be trauma, uh, mental trauma, lasting for uh, s several months. Are any of the players uh, having counselling or anything like that? Well, we've um, arranged that we will phone all the players uh, later today and again tomorrow because we had three or four of our youngsters uh, on board, 17 and 18-year-olds, who are in digs and don't have a family to go home to. We want to uh, ensure that they're fit and well, and if they do need counselling, they get it. And clearly we have to get our minds around whether uh, the team are in a fit per state to play on Saturday. How's Matthew? Uh, Matthew's uh, still, he's, he's a teenager who seems to think at the moment it's a good story to tell his school friends. <laughs> well, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. It's a pleasure, and it's a pleasure that I'm able to. Thank you. Earlier today, our reporter Sarah Willett spoke to Leeds United Chairman Peter Ridsdale at his home, and she started by asking him whether he feared for his life during the whole thing. Um, I was scared when we were in the air because there was a mixture of the flames and actually being off the ground. The minute it hit the ground, I felt slightly more comforted because I thought we stood a chance of getting out. And both the air crew and David O'Leary, who was in my opposite seat on the left-hand side of the plane, who very quickly um, pulled the emergency lever, hit the emergency door with his shoulder, and we all started getting out. Um, the minute I saw people getting out of the plane, we knew there was a chance. So the pilot and the crew have been praised for their actions. Is that, is, is that your view? Did you, do you think that they acted correctly and quickly? Ah, I mean, you know, we were in a burning plane, um, 150 feet up uh, in the air, and we got down safely, we got out safely. So I think the air crew were, were superb from the pilots, but also uh, the two stewardesses who were uh, obviously within the cabin of the plane. Obviously there's going to be a full investigation into what's happened. Will this have a bearing on how you choose to travel in the future with the team? Well, we've got a mental hurdle to get over now, both uh, personally and uh, with the players. Um, clearly, when something like this happens, and uh, it's, you know, car crashes happen day in, day out, but you know, most people perhaps naively think they're in a car crash, they stand a chance of getting out, because it depends on you know, the, the pace of the cars, etc. Very few people actually end up in an air incident and uh, get out alive. Uh, having done so, you then question you know, when you next want to get on a plane. 
and clearly we hope that we're going to get into Europe next season, therefore that's confronting us. We've got a lot of international players who are going to have to uh, travel with their countries for the World Cup, and that's uh, something that they're going to have to confront. I think at the end of the day, the sooner all of us get the opportunity to get on the plane and safely come out the other end, the better. Yes, there we are. This afternoon, Leeds United's assistant manager David O'Leary was described as a hero for forcing the emergency door when passengers feared the stricken plane might explode. As far as I'm concerned, he is. I mean, in, uh, in a situation like we were facing, for somebody to be able to be rational, um, take decisive action, uh, which uh, allows the rest of us to get out of a plane, for somebody who isn't used to that situation, is not a trained person in that situation, I think, you know, we've all got to uh, be grateful to. Tonight, everyone connected with Leeds United is left to reflect on a miraculous escape. If the fire had started a few seconds later into the flight, 44 people would almost certainly have been killed. Well, back here live at Ellen Road, I'm joined by the Leeds United legend Norman Hunter and my BBC colleague Bryn Law. Gentlemen, first of all, how are you? <laughs> been better, and it's, it's getting worse as, as, as the day wears on because, as we've both said, we've been speaking about it all day, and uh, in interviews, it's been this. And when you get a quiet moment, you just realise how, how the both of us and everybody, how lucky we were. We're in the same feelings? Very much so, yeah. I mean, I've been quite busy throughout the day. It's strange being part of a story and then also having to report on it yourself, and uh, it didn't give me a lot of time to reflect on what's gone on. In other, in other than reporting on it, but now I think the reflection's just starting. It's just nice to be here, really. Norman, can I ask you, what, just try and put it into perspective, your, your thoughts and feelings at, at the moment last night. Well, it was just as the plane took off, uh, when we saw that this uh, engine set on fire, it, it, it's amazing. You don't, you don't think you're really there. You, th you think you're sat in, sitting watching a video or something like that, but... The pilot did absolutely superb. I asked the steward, and she said, from the, the plane setting the light, from the engine setting the light, to actually us getting off the plane and running away, it was done in about two minutes. Well, that is a fantastic feat to get that plane down, engine stopped, and everybody off. And, and it didn't even seem that long. Now, Bryn, everyone praising the pilot, but also everyone praising David O'Leary for his quick thinking. Well, I think everybody deserves a degree of praise, to be honest with you. David O'Leary hurled himself at the door, got, to got the door open quickly so that people could be, begin an immediate evacuation. But also commendable was the way everybody behaved, I think. It was very calm, everyone was collected. Obviously, great panic and fear, but it was all being hidden. The players, the supporters and the officials, everybody very orderly in their evacuation, and that undoubtedly helped keep the situation under control throughout. Now, we all know how Leeds United fans bait Manchester United fans about the Munich air disaster, singing unpleasant songs and, and that kind of thing. It, do you think this might make many people stop doing that? Damien, I can tell you quite honestly that if anybody goes through this experience and then could stand up in this ground and sing that song, uh, they'd be subhuman, to be honest. You cannot go through an experience like that and then bait somebody else about going through it. I mean, we're only beginning to feel the first tremors, maybe the trauma that could be yet on its way for some of the people involved. That should never be heard in this ground or any other ground for that matter ever again. Norman footballers are notoriously superstitious. Are these guys going to fly again? Are you going to fly again? Oh, yeah, you've got to fly again. It's part of the job. Uh, I think the quicker the lads get on a plane as a unit, the better. And I think, like Bryn said, that was one of the reasons why nobody was hurt. It was because it was fit young men, the team together. They all got off the plane, and we could, we could get off that plane as quick as anybody, and we were away. And I think they'll get back on a plane, and I, I think they'll fly, because you have to. It's the only way you can get the games. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. It's good to see you in one piece. Well, more from Elland Road later, but now over... Tonight, Captain Hackett appeared at the door of his farmhouse in Staffordshire and said he was tired but fine after his ordeal. He's expected to give further details tomorrow.